Um, uh, this is a this, yeah, this is a flotilla Friday call, um, uh, May fourteenth, two thousand twenty-one. Um, we got started without the recording, uh, but now we'll catch up. Uh, so uh, we've got a HackMD with some stuff we've talked through, um, uh, and we'll just keep going. Um, so uh, factor, I think partly. Partly, Michael, it would be interesting just to hear a little bit about Factor I, for, for those of us who haven't played with it too much. But then also, um, this for me is, is kind of a bookmark for, you know, OK, so now we've got uh, massive wiki was with people and event directories in them, kind of theoretically. And then we've got Trove. And then we've got Factor. You know, maybe we've got Link SDG. I don't know. Uh, how, do, how do all these things play together? You were also talking about uh, ACT and stuff like that. So maybe I'll give the floor over to you. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just responding to a note from <laughs> Marc Antoine. Uh, I'm wondering if, if a screen share might be in order. If, if that's yeah, I, I thought about that and um, wasn't quite prepared for it. But uh, I mean, I thought about that after I saw myself on the agenda, saw Piper <laughs> on the agenda. Um, um, we can circle back around to that and talk yeah. about branding and stuff first. Well, sure. Okay. Either yeah. either way, you're, you're uh, but, I mean, the branding thing is is sort of. I, you want to I talk about like, that? Well, I feel no, no. I feel like that's that's related and will you know lead logically into the particulars of factor. You know. I okay. Mean, yeah. Sure. Um, cool. Um, I I think that's maybe you, Vincent. I I want to mention real quick. I wrote on the notes community marks. Um, uh, Chris Messina, um, way back in the early days of, of well, back in the days of social software, um, he and a couple of the people created something called Barcamp, which was an open space inspired um, pop-up uh, conference format. Um, uh, and he did something really interesting. Um, he he kind of open sourced um, uh, the the way to run a bar camp. And then he also open sourced the, the logo. Um, he's a, he, ended, he, he, he is um, one of his hats is graphic designer. So they had a nice logo. Um, but anyway, he open sourced it. And the idea then you'd have, um, you know, bar camp, uh, San Antonio bar camp DevOps or something like that. Everybody took that logo and they actually tweaked it a little bit and made it different. He's got a couple of posts um, that are very eloquently written about um, uh, okay, guys, um, and the way he said it is, I don't have the money or time, we don't have the money or time to hire trademark lawyers to protect, you know, to register Barcamp as, as a registered trademark. And that's not a community kind of thing anyway. So this is a community mark. I'm, I'm de declaring it a community mark. And here's the idea of a community mark. The community owns it and protects it. So if you see something, somebody doing something bad with that mark, um, you know, gather up the posse and go uh, go give them heck on Twitter or wherever, right? And make them stop. Um, and you know, to the extent that you know, d do the right thing with the logo. It's pretty cool, and and the um, you know, and the format. So, uh, so that's a really well written post. Um, while somebody else is talking, I'll go find the um, a couple of links and post them in here. Yeah. Now so to you, Vincent. That's a cool cool example. I think that I think how when I read the community marks, it spoke more from the level of like the decentralized uh, like legal <laughs> support than it did the design systems. But maybe because I didn't know it was initially invented like around Barcamp. Um, but one thing that has been um, and Pete, could you just pass uh, screen sharing? Um, Dang it, I thought I turned it on. <laughs> Yeah, there one thing that to me as like a, so my background, I, I, I did an interdisciplinary design program. Uh, and so I have some experience with graphic design, but more in the, the types of graphic design that deals with systems. And so there's a whole kind of um, sphere of graphic design related to how do you create design systems? And so this is one example, uh, the MIT Media Labs logo is a um it's a low they have a few different versions of it but they wanted to create a logo that you would basically traverse across different like subsects of their ecosystem so the mit media lab 
could be like, you know, a number, like this could be the logo for the library. This could be the logo for like their, their science program. This could be the logo for their arts program. Um, they have these different iconography styles where you can tell by looking at this that there it's a cohesive set of colors, of shapes. They have, um, it's a pixel grid. So and the, there's a design rule where any logo created needs to fit within a black and white pixel, like what is this, like 10 by 10 pixel grid or something, right? And so this is their like civic media changing places. They have a main logo. They have sub logos. You can, within that rule set, you can play around and you can try to make a, like a, a picture. You can try to like spell out like, I, you know, some letters. Um, and so this idea of like design systems is something that you see like mostly only in monopolies. Like you look at Google and you look at their icon set of like the Google Drive, Google Calendar, and they have the cohesive set of, of different logos that creates somewhat of a seamless experience. And so I'm wondering what it would be like to have similar types of design systems in the new kind of emergent sense of like lots of different projects working together um, that have unique, you know, that have their own kind of project and their own sovereign identity, but maybe have design systems where the branding can kind of play into each other. Um, and I think, and there's been huge controversy over Google's new uh, icon change. I don't know if anyone has seen that, just kind of like a little funny uh, <laughs> tidbit. Um, everyone thinks that the logos all look exactly the same and they went way too modern. Uh, like this was their initial kind of logo set, which was like, um, which like everything was pretty different, but they still felt similar. And then they actually went too, conf too, too similar, where now you look at these squinting your eyes, you actually can't tell them apart. So there's ways to do this in a way that's tasteful and there's ways to do it in a way that is uh, to corporate overlordy and, and also doesn't work visually. It's really cool. I, cool. I like the idea of, of an OGM terminology of sovereigns um, collaborating together to make a design pattern, a, a design system. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah, I like that. Um, I, I would also point at the, I, I, I don't think Google is as bad as what you know, Adobe did, where um, their their set of icons is just like they were playing on you know elemental symbols, I guess. But boy, are those things hard to tell apart when you're yeah at a, at a yeah they're bad. Um, so you're doing that for Trove Catalyst, Vincent? Well, that's the problem. So um, <laughs> I can create a, a system of logos that works together. But if that's not done in a way that's uh, collaborative and speaking for everyone else's, and, and there's so much more than just the logo, there's the, the, the kind of, it, it becomes very complex very quickly. But just to show one other thing of how I've been doing that within the kind of catalyst ecosystem of tools. So I have not finalized a, yo a logo yet for Trove, but I came across a logo by taking the catalyst logo and turning it 90 degrees. So right now the Catalyst logo is a C and I realized you could turn that C over and create like a, a, a little bit, like kind of like an O. Um, and the interesting thing is that in the white space of that O, you, there's actually other logos. And so this could be a potential Catalyst logo and then flipped upside down could be another logo. And then um, basically the these logos like intersect. So the Trove logo is the white, the negative space of a little rocket ship, but it's also like a doorway. Um, and they, they basically like fit, they fit together. Um, and so obviously when you're doing this with two or three entities, it's, it's more simple than if you're doing it with 10, right? So this is like current kind of playing around with like different, you can have, you know, just by rotating one logo, you can create three or four somewhat distinct logos that fit together in the design system. Uh, so like this is kind of like the, the initial inspiration was like a doorway and a, a key lock. And so doing this in a way that also has like lots of hidden meaning is like really difficult. So 
uh, this is like a treasure chest where the, the the white space of the white space becomes like a key a keyhole. Um, and so being able to do that level of like meaningful design systems is very difficult uh, at scale across across multiple things. It's, it's much easier to say, let's make a nine by nine grid and, and pick two colors. Um, but regardless, I think it's something to strive for. And I think it all, not just with the kind of uh, logos, but there are other uh, verticals or that you can do that, whether it's colors, whether it's typography, whether it's um, themes of types of names, um, right? So like Factor, uh, uh, Trover, uh, Massiver, like like an R at the end of each name could, could make a cohesive ecosystem that people makes, it makes sense to, to navigate between them, right? So th there's more than just logos, um, but I use a logo example because it, it encompasses a lot of that. I also think an example worth, worth pointing out is Atlassian's products because you've got, you know, something from like the, the people who use Trello are not the same people who use, I mean, sometimes they are, but, but you have this range of products that run from the simple to the complex um, and have different needs where some people will be playing in one area. Their logo system, I don't think is particularly um, unified. I, I'd have to look again, but um, what is true is the, the interoperability is there. And obviously they're under one umbrella, one company, but I think there's some, some stuff to glean from that. Um, I, I think- a tiny, tiny comment, Vincent. It, it's also like a badminton shuttlecock. That shape is like exactly yeah. like a badminton shuttlecock. Yeah. But, uh, but no, seriously, great work. Really, really cool concepts. Very cool. I also see a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's one of them too. I didn't see the badminton one, but I, Michael, I saw the, the light at the tunnel. Uh, who knows, maybe we can have a troll uh, badminton team when things open up. <laughs> Um, I th so I think um, brilliant ideas, uh, Vincent, and I really like the idea of, of separate sovereigns using a collaborative system. Um, I, I, uh, are, are there any action items that, I'll, this is a question for everybody, action items that we should take away from this or thinking about it, putting it in the flotilla wiki? Um, I think it's, I've lit up by it. I want to, I'm all over it for Kiko Lab as a concept. I'm sure Lauren will be into that. And, um, but I think, you know, back on Flotilla tools for connectors, this is definitely a type of a tool for connecting. I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Maybe, uh, uh, is it time to, to hand it over to you, Michael? Michael, rule number one, <laughs> that I broke. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was uh, on another screen and let's see if I can pull this off. Um, give me a second. Is screen sharing enabled for, for everybody? It should be, yes. I, I believe it to be, which is different than it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm uh, got to pull back the screen where I was searching for first names with hyphens in them. Um, got to solve. Uh, don't you problem. love uh, real-time bug reports? <laughs> Sorry, I should not have distracted you with no, this. No, I, just, cool. I thought, cool. I, you know, it's a bug. I'll report it, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> Move I appreciate on. it. I appreciate <laughs> it. I just wanted to solve it quickly if I could. And um, like you want to fix it immediately. You want to squash it. Exactly. Easier than yeah. making a note about it to come back to. <laughs> All right. 
I tried in two browsers, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because I mean, we got like dozens of, of hyphenated first name users, but somehow something's not right. Might be a new rule. What's that? It might be a new rule. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's something in the front end JavaScript or something. I, I can well, offer that. This, this is a problem with a non technical co founder. <laughs> oh, yeah, blame it on the co founder. Huh? No, no. Him, I don't. Right? I don't have a technical co-founder. Oh, oh, excuse me. So, sorry. so you know, Factor has been um, built uh, by. Uh, by so, so, of course, so the way everything. you say it you is, uh, I've I've reported it to the team, and the team is working on it as we speak. Exactly. Yeah, yeah diligently. <laughs> so I have a kind of um, ordinary prompt, which is like I'm seeing on the site, you know, a new kind of social network. Like, and so it just, uh, I don't know when you started doing this, but but um, we've seen this is, so many of these sort this of pop is up. factor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, sort of um, how, you know, that's a big challenge just to get attention to, to, to see really why it's new and what's, why is it special. And I'm sure you right. have great answers. So thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> I should have great answers, but um, I, will, I will try to, uh, um, to do right by you. Um, the I, I, social network is a is a term that we use with some trepidation. Um, it was mostly around a, a test we did uh, a little over a year ago with Kickstarter, um, where we were basically trying to model our 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 subscription. Uh, offerings and put them in the form of levels so that we could see um, how people reacted uh, to them and it was good and informative um, but you know social network is 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 a term that's been so bastardized that it's really an uncomfortable one um, we're a knowledge network um, we're very much about asynchronicity as opposed to that always on uh, feeling. Um, so um, let me let me just give you the, the basic lay of the land. Um, Factor is a place where you can either manually put things or invite things by using RSS feeds. Um, and you can follow other people's uh, posts and you can filter anything you're looking at by a bunch of different criteria. Um, so our, our aspiration is to be more of a place for focus and more of a place where things end up and um, have increased value with their stay on the platform as opposed to um, being, you know, there's, there's no chat, there's no, um, there's no, there's no push toward, um, engagement and there's no fear of missing out because anything that's been on factor stays on factor. And if anything, it gets easier to find and more organized as you go. Um, then it gets, you know, more annotation and more tags and more, uh, of the, the reputational stuff that we want to accrete around objects where ultimately, and, and I think this is one thing that we share with, with Trove and, and other um, people who are playing in this space, the desire to let people's um, uh, reputational and, and subject matter expertise um, assets make individual items more notable in certain contexts. Um, and I, I, that, that to me is also something that we really want to think about how it works across platforms. Um, True.net is, is doing some stuff with that that I think could be useful for us. And we've talked to them. Um, Vincent, you're obviously doing some stuff with that and, and you know, figuring out ways that we can unite that um, seems important. 
Um, so uh, I didn't really have um, some great stuff prepped, but let me see what I can show you. Um, this is this is the most social network like aspect of the platform, which is an activity feed, which is not algorithm algorithmically governed. It's governed by you. You're looking here at everything that's been posted by anybody. It's like my friend Phil posted a bunch of stuff lately. Um, uh, you know, here's something I posted to uh, to. This is our address, so this is really just for my wife. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna be showing anything too uh, too uh, scandalous here. But um, I'll, um, good question. Yeah. This, mm -hmm. um, it looks like there's a chat um, or a comment um, feature, so that's not yeah. quite chatting, but so that's yeah, engagement. But, right? but importantly, the commenting is around, and this is is this how I would concept con trust what we're doing with something like Slack. Slack, you have the problem where somebody posts something, people talk about it, and same is true with Mattermost. It disappears up the river, you can't find it. Um, this way, even if you're weighing in on something that someone's posted weeks later, A, you're able to find it easily um, if you remember anything about it. B, you're able to join the discussion, which, you know, conceivably never ends. You know, the discussion about that item is, stays attached to that item. Um, so yeah, there is, there is that engagement, but we're not about engagement. And one thing I'm sorry, I should back up and say is the business model is a subscription model um, and it's a freemium model. We point to Dropbox as, as the best example of what we're trying to do in that, um, most of the people who use Dropbox, I mean, like 90 odd percent of them use it for free. And you can look at that as, oh man, how do you work something when almost nobody's paying for it? But really, if you think of those people as just your sales funnel, um, that it's great to have that many people in your sales funnel. Um, and so we have a $5 and $10 a month roughly, you know, with discounts if you do an annual subscription. And that's what we were modeling on uh, on Kickstarter and, and brought a big cohort of users from, from that. Um, so- another, another quick question. Yeah, Sorry, sure. just, um, it looks like you can you can copy the link. And I was also curious under the three dots, if, if you can, no, on the, yeah, yeah so there. Actually, let me go to, um, let me go to something- oh, go ahead. Yeah. where I have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you more capabilities. I'm going to tell you about that. My, my question was just back on the, the things getting lost in Slack or Mattermost, the, the wonderful affordance is being able to link to it and, and save the link if you want. So, right. Want to make I mean, you know, if nothing else, absolutely, it is a bookmarking tool. And one of the things that we um, allow people to do is um, import bookmarks to make them factor items and then they can organize them as they see fit because um, what uh, I'm, I'm going to go back. <laughs> Sorry, like I said, I wasn't totally prepared for a presentation, but the inbox is your nobody else sees it spot. Um, and, and you can make folders within it for yourself. So that is the thing that is nothing like a social network that's more like um, Skeletally, the only social network that shares something with it is Pinterest, because Pinterest is the one place where you you might make a board that's just for you that nobody else sees. You might do something else that's just for a work team that you're working with, and then you might do something else that you're exposing to strangers. Likewise, you might be looking for things for yourself from strangers, you know, looking around by by tags and and reputationally, in a sense, to the extent you can. Um, but they're ad supported, so they're always trying to get you to click on stuff. We're not, we want you to find what you find, find, want to find easily, quickly, get in, get out. You know, you'll, you'll know factors working for you when you don't spend much time with it. Um, so in my inbox, I might throw just anything I see that I'm, what is that? oh yeah, 
<laughs> got a little worried. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, just throw anything that's sort of a bookmark to me that I want to put somewhere. And this is stuff that I haven't sorted through yet. And to your question, Charles, um, the three dots, um, you know, are, are just things that you might want to do. And I would point to this one importantly, um, to be able to create chronologies, to be able to put dates on things that don't have to, some, sometimes when you posted something, it's not what it, what not important, it's when it's from originally, and maybe it's an archival something. Like uh, I used to work at the Village Voice and I have a bunch of, uh, um, actually I've got this for you later. Did you write for them or what did you do with them? Sorry. I was the design director uh, oh. back in the late eighties, one of my earliest jobs. I was a reader. <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> back when people used to pay for it. Um, anyway, uh, I've got this, uh, sorry, this um, covers stream that a few fellow voicers and I were working on. And it basically um, is a chronology of not all, but, but some voice covers with information about who took the photographs and who designed them. And, um, and you can display things in a case like this, very visually, if you were doing something else, you might want to display it. Oh man, you're taking me back here. <laughs> <laughs> you want, might want to just, just display something as a list because you're scrolling through it quickly and you don't want to have to load all the image, images. Um, and uh, you, know, you can take action on things um, like comment on it, highlight it. And if you are looking at something and you want to see only the things that have had tags put on them, uh, you can limit it to the tags item, tagged items. And then if you want to go deeper and say, I only want to see the things that were tagged, too many tabs open, um, you know, only the things that were, um, that is something that has at least a few things. You got Greg Tate in there? Uh, I do, I do. Um, He's a friend. He comes to Kiko Ave sometimes. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Um, I think I probably have a Tate something. It, okay. it, honestly, it's easier. I mean, mostly the, the first thing that got tagged were photographers and, and designers. So um, I'll just, uh, well. I'll be lazy and show you three James Hamilton photographs. Um, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going on a little bit long, but um, uh, uh, I, I think um, that's a that's a good quick overview, Michael. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sure. maybe maybe the next thing is to dig into some uh, focus questions. Mm -hmm. um, let me rattle off um, a couple that I came to, and then I don't need them all answered, but maybe you can pick one or two of the interesting ones or all of them or whatever. Um, uh, so you talked a little bit already about, um, uh, about a subscription model rather than, you know, free um, customers, the um, customers, the product, users, the product. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested in about uh, an API and import export. Um, and your tech stack. Um, also, um, I think the folks here, at least some of the folks here, uh, would love to learn about your marketing efforts and what's been successful and what hasn't been. Um, and then which user segment is most, uh, most fo uh, what, what you're focused on, uh, user, uh, user segment wise, who are the power users? Um, what, what's your favorite feature? I'm, by the way, I'm reading off the HackMD. <laughs> So um, <laughs> okay. I can paste all those into uh, the best place for you if you want. Maybe the chat. Does that work? Um, I can I can go to the hack and now that I'm not screen sharing. Um, it's at line like 60, 74, maybe. Another question, just how many how many people are on there around at this point? Uh, it's a bit over 3,000. 
Um, and, but you know, the most, it's really, this is an interesting challenge um, for a platform, which, you know, where, as I say, we have, there, there are a lot of features I can get into. One of them is if you've set up um, streams that are, that are based on feeds, you can um, send yourself a daily or weekly newsletter um, that basically just gives you your, your typical, you know, headline description image of stories that have met your criteria that you'd set up in that stream. And I didn't show you an aggregated stream with RSS feeds, but um, that's, that's a key use. Um, so we have people who, who have set up a newsletter for themselves and because of it only come to the platform when they see something in their newsletter that they want to read further on, but it's their top read in a bunch of subject areas on the day that they get in their email. So are they active users? You know, um, I mean, some of them are paying, some of them are free. Um, it's, it's, it's a tough, you know, figuring out what our KPIs are is a challenge. Um, sorry, I'm going to let happen. Thanks for playing along, by the way. And I, I, I'm sorry. I, this, I, I, I'm sorry you didn't get to prep more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, sorry. I was, I was, I was expecting to be more of a fly on the wall at this meeting than, uh, than actually speaking up. Um, and, and whenever you want, we can bail, and you know, we can uh, pick it up next. No, I mean, those are good questions, and this is great for me because, like, I'm not, I'm not a speaker pitcher, and you know, uh, I can use all the practice I can get. So, um, speaking of which, I, I just dropped in your, an invitation for a hot seat at Kiko Lab, which is a five minute version uh, and then a 10 minute Q&A. So it's cool. kind of a, 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 an interesting constraint to think about. Yeah, and that's, that's how I first uh, found out about Catalyst and, and um, when, uh, when Vincent did that. And I, that, was, that was why my pitch for, oh, do record it because, you know, that's, that's how people, that's the gateway drug. Um, so, uh, yeah, so um, the, the no push for engagement is really, I think, um, I think Dropbox is so useful to think about because I think people who use Dropbox feel fine about it. Um, they feel fine about the amount they use. There may be people who pay for it because they have a lot of stuff on it. They like knowing it's there. And we often talk about the contrast between always on and information overload and the sense that there are all these things coming at you all the time, um, that your information diet is managed by opening your refrigerator having a bunch of stuff fly at you and trying to find the stuff that is not poison. Um, and that's a really shitty way to have an information diet, but rather to be able to very deliberately choose what you want, have it where you need it when you need it. That, that's the way, that's the healthy way. Yep, and, makes, makes a ton of sense. Let me let me sharpen the focus of that question a little bit more okay. because I, I get the utility of it. Um, mm -hmm. Zoom actually is now, now especially with COVID, it's been an, another excellent example of something that has a bunch of free users and then, you know, some of them spill over to be paid. Um, I, that, that question for me was really, um, you've got investors or you've got rent to pay or, you know, you're paying for server time or something like that, you yeah. know. Um, it, there's a tension between, you know, I, why don't we just get more users and, you know, and try to figure out how, how they pay instead of like giving better utility to users, which um, obviously, you know, people love, but maybe your your investors or your bank account might not. Well, that's that's an interesting business model challenge, which I've, I've talked a little bit about in, in, in OGM is, you know, if you're if your objective is to um, model the behavior you'd like to see more of in the world and be a sustainable zebra as opposed to 
a quick growth DC backable um, unicorn. It's in, in some ways I would be totally happy if we only ever had a 3000 user user base and they were paying enough that it supported what we were doing. Okay, but you know, I, I because I think it's it's a good kind of thing. I'd want to see it replicated, and we're quite inexpensive to operate at this point. And our incremental costs mostly have to do with hosting and storage. So that's what we're charging for when we're we're charging people on some additional features that we want to support the engineering behind. Um, so I don't know if that exactly. Yeah, that does. Um, then the the there's a follow-on question which um, uh, sustainable zebras get asked, um, and now I am thinking of Trello actually, and um, uh, and I think there was one more, but anyway, it's like okay, so I love I love my sustainable zebra until it gets bought by right. some corporate thing. Well, I mean that's that's another business model question. I mean we're in the process of the corp certification. Um, which, you know, will codify some of the things that, you know, can't be changed even if yep. we're purchased. Um, but, you know, they're, we want to move beyond that in terms of ensuring people that, you know, there are never going to be ads on the platform. We're just never going to be an attention extraction data sucking yeah. business model. That's not, it's exactly um, what we're trying to make escape from. Uh, I, I just did not hear hear you uh, it garbled a little bit. That's a B Corp you're going for? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, oh, awesome. I thought you said also at first. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I keep, being... keep keep going. Uh, some of the some of the uh, more some more questions. Yeah. Um, so importing is something that we're constantly working on. Basically, right now, you can li links are most of what you saw, but basically you can upload anything to the platform, any kind of file. I mean, you have and it and it, a positive is that it allows you to sort stuff by subject matter and the access you want to give people to it. Like, okay, all the stuff that has or our home is over here and my family's over there and this work team's over there and this free freelance clients over there. And in those um, access defined spaces, you are putting, you know, podcasts and uh, PDFs and links and whatever, each of which can have a discussion hanging off it if it needs it. Um, but you know, we're not format, we're format agnostic. And right now, you so know, when, have, when, what other, kind of, what kind of formats are you talking about? Um, just, you know, I, I can, from my phone, I can upload photos, upload video, upload sound files. Um, I can, you know, move something from my hard drive up to, you know, a, a PDF from my hard drive and put it, you know, in a, a stream or a folder. Um, I can, yeah, just, just about anything. The one okay. thing that you can't do right now, but we want to let people do, which we think would be really useful is forward an email into a stream so that, you know, you can kind of get stuff, do your inbox zero by putting stuff with related stuff, um, on the platform. Okay. I, um, my, my import question is actually a little bit different. Um, uh, and maybe it's maybe it's me being con a little bit confused about what factor does, but um, but for me, um, I, I have I have a use case which factor hit, hits pretty closely, which is um, I go through my day. Um, I'm looking up links for people. I'm reading Twitter and finding a bunch of cool stuff. You know, there's a tweet I want to share. Um, so. I want to grab all that stuff and have it in a river someplace. And then I want people to be able to subscribe to the river, right? Mm -hmm. um, so also I already I already have a bunch of um, artifact management tools that I use uh, like uh, Chrome bookmarks or, mm -hmm. or I happen to use Pinboard or mm -hmm. you know I'm using, somebody might use um, uh, Hypothesis or something like that. So 
you know, theoretically, I could get from Pinboard a, an export, maybe either HTML or or OPML or something like that, which has got, you know, all of my links going back 20 years, right? Um, can I give you a list, you know, a, a list of links going back 20 years? And can you do something with that or maybe not? Yeah, I mean, I know we, I mean, um, using a CSV file is something, again, here's my limitation as a non-technical co-founder, um, is something that we have um, hacked um people have hacked um uh using group chrome bookmarks easy easy as pie um pulling in your own tweets um so therefore getting all the things you've posted but not all the things that you've favorited or liked um but if you retweeted it you can you can pull in all your tweets you can pull in all your Facebook posts. Um, we are, you know, uh, it, it's a very obvious use case to just make that, whether, you know, just using, you know, Zapier or something or, or, yeah. or building in um, the tools to do it. Um, yeah. Just we, want, um, we want to let people just bring that stuff in and then organize it. However yeah. They so, uh, and, Zapier would be uh, line 85. So you've got stuff like that already, right? Yeah, some. Yeah, um, not as much as we like. Yeah. Um, by the way, <laughs> while we're hitting that import thing, uh, I, I actually subscribe to a service called favorites.io, um, favorite spelled with a U. Um, and all it is, is it stocks my favorites, um, which I kind of use as bookmarks, and then lets me search them. Um, and it's not not a very well done service, but it, it has been useful at, at once in a while when I need to search, you know, my favorites. I also I've also got Pinboard stocking my favorites, so all of my favorites go to Pinboard as well. Wow. So it would be cool to also put them on Factor. Um, um, to answer your question about power users and who's who who we're having yeah. to take from. We actually, because of the RSS reader capability, coupled with um, the ability to, um, you know, make manual um, groupings of things and present them and discuss them, we have a lot of um, forecasters, futurists, researchers who are following, you know, analysts who are following a bunch of stuff than you know making a presentation of it for someone else um, and scrolling past a bunch of false positives that meet their search criteria and i really i kind of did you guys a disservice by not showing the um, rss feed filtering because it's pretty powerful it's, it's it's very good um but you can experiment with that if you try the platform um Pearl trees, I see somebody mentioning, I'm actually looking at the-, the um, I used it for years. Yeah, yeah. There, there, are, there are definitely things in common. In okay. fact, we had like one of our earliest power users was taking everything she found using the, um, the, the RSS feed filtering on Factor and then putting it on Pearl trees to show to other people because she'd been using Pearl trees, but now she's doing the whole thing on Factor. Um, we've also got a, a an email newsletter construction tool so that if you have found a bunch of things and you want to share them with people who are off the platform you can pull them all together into a newsletter uh, that's down at the moment we're just doing some work on it um, but you can send them out um, so another another tool um, but yeah the power users tend to be people who um, are either creating creating something they want to present to somebody else. So like that Village Voice cover stream, it, it, it's not really one, but an example of some people who are lovingly composing some curated thing and then wanting to make it public uh, to people that they point in that direction, which you can do. You know, people don't have to be members of the platform to see a given uh, creative Is that stream. one actually public, by the way? 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. If you can share the link, I would love to sure. see it and share it, share it forth. Okay. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> um, but I will share the link. Um, Michael, the, the, the hard thing that I just want to obviously commend you for, but it's, it's something that. Is that really Vincent? Good. I can't quite hear you. You're very faint. <laughs> Yeah. Is this better? Hello, hello. A little bit, yeah. A little bit better. Okay. It's not not great, but it's it's a little better. Okay. Um. So I was saying the. I feel like there's this this like this double-edged sword. Like it's really difficult to design for engagement without designing for hyper engagement. Right. Right. So, so having something that's like, you know, we're not trying to put anything in your face. We're not trying to give you FOMO. We're not trying to uh, like do anything that might be nudging you in a certain direction. Um, if you don't do any of it, then people won't use the thing. And then if you do too much of it and you fall you tip over the, the edge of the cliff, then you're on a free fall dive, like Facebook to just like hyper engagement, right? So I feel like this is a really difficult thing where like, where do you draw the line? I agree. And, and honestly, we're, our, our, you know, hard line default is we're gonna sacrifice engagement for user control, everything. There's, there's nothing, you know, you control what you see, what you save, what you share. It's just all, you know, we are running the risk of being something that you put a bunch of stuff on, forget you have it there and then say, oh yeah. And, uh, you know, come back to it um, much later. Uh, you know, like people have their their photos they put on Flickr years ago or some Pinterest boards that they barely ever look at. You know, we, we are actively running the risk of doing that. But the one thing I would say is because we're, you know, single player mode friendly, I, I think there's, there's some utility in just knowing you have it there, um, a, a la Dropbox, um, that that you derive a benefit even if you're not engaging that frequently. But yeah, it, it's totally, it's a, it's a concern, it's a risk, yeah. Yeah, I think my, my advice is, uh, and the reason why I asked the question about who are your power users is because I think to be successful at, what, at, at keeping that line, uh, and I could be wrong, but I think it's, how do you make a seven star experience for a specific subset of users where you're going beyond their expectations? Um, and so for example, for me, uh, I don't want people to go onto Trove and like post stuff about music. And Charles was like, hey, why don't you have this like art NFT part of your site? I was like, no, <laughs> focus. Like, I don't want that. Like I want, what I want is I want a small set of engaged users that are interested in creating impact and social impact projects and sharing things that are of a certain flavor. And so I'm going to be designing it to, so if somebody is like, looks at SDGs and is like, they're gonna not wanna use the site. Um, so instead of making it very broad in terms of the branding is like kind of like focusing it on like, how to make this a seven star experience for a specific subset of people that uh, that are going to like love to love to use it. Um, oh no, Charles, I was exaggerating. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think, um, yeah, the point being like focusing on one user group and then like, it seems like factor to me, it doesn't feel like it has yet found a like, um, either it hasn't found a vertical or the vertical isn't me. Because when I use it, I was like, I, I wouldn't use this. I've, I've seen a couple other like bookmarking tools and there wasn't anything that like stood out mm -hmm. for, for me and what I do. 
um, which is different than what Pete does and what Charles is interested in. Yeah. Like, I don't care about artists or albums or curating that kind of stuff. I care about uh, articles. And so like the only, but I'm picky. And so like the only uh, like actual product that I use besides like the main ones is Refined. Have you guys heard of that? I have. Uh, you know, let me screen share. Uh, Cause it's a cool, it is, I'm, I'm like, hmm. hold on, wrong screen. I think you can set that up for newsletters too, right? I think I feel like I get newsletters through the refined. So you could. Um, so this product consistently delights me and I, have, I, I don't find this very often and so I use it. So when you open a new tab, uh, it basically, it just picks like two or three articles that it thinks that you'll be interested in each day. Yeah each day it cycles through like a recommended list. So it's like super high quality. Like it'll give you like one or two articles a day. Um, and almost out of the top five articles they pick, I almost always like bookmark one of them and say, oh, I need to read this for later. Like, I don't know how their algorithm is just great. Uh, and like, so this like tech giants have all become corporate. Like I have this cause I want to read it later. Um, and so uh, like, this is one of those products that it's like super simple. It's just like, a, you know, it's when you open a new tab, it just pops up uh, and then you can create um, your kind of like collections. And their whole thing is the reason why I downloaded this is because it was an ad that was like, what if you could be like, it was talking about like being smart and how being smart is like what you read and how like, you know, the five books that you read this year is gonna like inform most of your, what you're doing and like what you talk about and like how other people look at you. And, and their whole thing, their like focus is people who want to be feel smart. And they like, they even said like in the design, they're like, these are the things that made me smarter. And they have a button that says, did this make you smarter by reading it? And that's their entire thing. Did reading this thing make you smarter? And that is such a specific focus. It would turn off anyone who do, who doesn't like that, but the people who do want to feel smart love it. And that's the thing that I like respect about this specific tool that I usually don't love a tool enough to like screen share it in a video call and like talk about it. I think most of them are pretty black, um, but Refined gets, gets me and that's why I like it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, it sounds like there's some stuff that we could learn from that too, though. I will say that the algorithm thing is obviously people people are so used to it that um, every everything every discussion you hear about you know how do we uh, how do we combat disinformation on Facebook is all all these things about tweaking the algorithms and nobody really talks about uh, not nobody but it's it's not the front of of the agenda to say why don't we give people the tools to, you know, make their algorithms, set their filter criteria, um, literally say, okay, I'm interested in things from these sources that, you know, mention these things that are, are a video or are not a video, you know, I mean, all, all those kinds of things that would bring you the content you want. And then, you know, allow somebody to choose some serendipity if they want to. Yes, I am open to, you know, other sources if they mention this, or I'm open to this source, you know, and there are all kinds of things you can do if you put those controls in the user's hands. Um, that's, that's our approach. I had another um, question about, oh, go ahead. Did you want to tag on there? Uh, actually, I was going to kind of shift this maybe, um, uh, unless you've got a really important question. Just kind of quick, quick question I'm curious about in terms of discoverability. I'm not sure if, if, you, if you referred to that in passing before, but um, sort of meeting the strangers out there. Is there something quick you could say on that? M meeting strangers out there? Well, that... you're seeing their stuff, but are, are you connecting? I mean, the, I know you said there's no engagement or it, well, but you anyway. Can, you can. Um, connect with people and that it's a very, very simple connection that, that just um, 
it, it's it's consensual. Um, somebody can't can't follow you without your consent. Um, you know, can't connect with you without your consent. Um, and then you're able to um, uh, you know see each other's um, profile streams if you're if you've chosen to be private. Um, and there in the in the profiles um, we have things I'm knowledgeable about, things I'm curious about. So you can search profiles for subject matter in interests. So you find somebody who might be, you know, posting information that's relevant to you or that you might want to connect with and, and kind of work from there. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh... Let's let's head for the the half hour. Um, Vincent's got to leave in town. Mark Antoine's got to got to wrap up, and um, I I wouldn't mind getting off either. Even though thanks I everybody talk for about this. Me. Uh, it's, uh, thank you, Michael. Um, yeah. oh, it's really great. Uh, 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 if we look at uh, so so two things. Um, uh, let's let's talk right now about what to talk about another time, maybe next week. Um, so I, I'd like to kind of look at the hack and be, um, not everybody has to look at it, but I will look at it if I can find Just it. Just a quick, uh, a quick note that, that Ivan did respond. Um, and I thought, awesome. I, I just also saw your wonderful um, reply to him. So those could be useful for the channel maybe to share, but anyway, just to say there's a little engagement there. Um, thanks. Uh, so, um, uh, looking at uh, things that we could have talked about, um, uh, I'd like to talk more about this, the, the advanced use of massive, um, better collaboration with, with polls, but not, not today, some other time. Um, uh, and then I guess the, the thing that I was hoping we might get to, and maybe we won't too much, but maybe we can cover it for another five minutes or something. Um, just talking about riffing a little bit about so there's Trove, there's Soccer, there's Massive, you know, there's whatever else. Um, uh, how are we going to kind of stitch those together? You know, um, so talking maybe a little bit more about APIs, but not quite so uh, geeky as, as Mark Antoine and I did. Um, maybe talking about no code formats, that kind of stuff. Um, is there other stuff that we should talk about like next week? Can I, can I, uh, I don't know if it's something you want to talk about, but something I'm really interested in it's not exactly api but it's close a lot of us are working on information appliances which are about information nuggets and rather than think about i mean I'm, i've been thinking a lot about sharing the information itself you know so and that means agreeing on apis but i'm thinking there's a totally different use case which is transclusion between applications it yeah. should be possible for me to say, here's the URL of this information nugget. And that means it, this gets me, among other things, uh, the URL of uh, not a frame, but ideally um, a, a, a little custom tag uh, and- um, so, so like an HTML transclusion. Not, an not... HTML, yeah, and, uh, yeah, exactly. An HTML custom, uh, custom prop, not property, custom tag uh, that I can just embed and say, okay, I'm using this nugget. And that means it's there, it's in the context of my app, but it still says it comes from there and you can go there and see it's in its context, but right now it's in my context. And so yeah. that all our information appliances could be sharing. Uh, and Jury has worked a lot on that aspect of uh, combining uh, HTML applications without necessarily sharing code or without sharing. And this is definitely something I'd like us to think about collectively uh, because we're all building things. We all want to exchange data. There's a data exchange is still important, but exchanging the, pro the visual manifestation of it, I think would be extremely useful in building this ecosystem of information appliances. So, so then presumably, that would that would be like a link 
like a, a URL that's going to return a little snippet of HTML, right? Yep. It's, it's ideally there should be like, you know how in HTML, uh, HTTP you have, okay, give me the JSON representation of the data. Give me, well, give me the HTML representation of the data and it will be a, and maybe we have to design. So it would be a kind of applet that would just have this little information micro snippet. And then it could be parameterizable, right? You could say, uh, oh, I want it in this small view, big view with this data, with it, this data, with it. But these would all be, um, you'd give the parameters to the uh, web custom tag and it would know what to fetch, where to fetch the original uh, data and know how to display itself and render itself with some constraints. Anyway, that's just a crazy project. Can we make this using uh, not any specific framework, but the new standards of um, the new web tags so that it's, it's extremely agnostic and uh, we can share between any web applications? Should be possible now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really brilliant, uh, Mark Antoine, thanks. Um, it, it reminds me a little bit of microformats, except microformats work differently. Um, they embedded- Microform Microformats are again about sharing the data. Here is, yeah. I want to share the transclusion. That, like an atom, a nugget, yeah. Yeah. So this would be like, if so if, if Factor had a, uh, a bookmark and then there were comments, right? And then maybe there were like tags, um, and, and then if, you know, Massive had a wiki page or if Trove had like a resource page, which had exactly. comments or tags, they would each create an HTML uh, like version of that, which would then be able to like, so it would be as, as a little dumb element for a short version. Here's the, the, the Cliff's Note version of this, or maybe not Cliff's Note, that would be parameterizable pre precisely. You, you want a, a full version or a small version, but something that can be embedded, an embeddable version of the data element. So, so it, rem it reminds me, there's, there's already formats for kind of a, a website. Um, so Google um, will look at a summary or Slack will look at a summary and you know, uh, yep. unfurl a link into that, but I think, so that's 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 almost that's like a static different. one, right? For a website. Yeah, Something that's still sharing that. data. I want I want <clears> to be <throat> able to share a, a web component, basically. Oh yeah, web component. That's the name I was looking for. <laughs> create a web create a web share a web component. And that means it's active. It's got your I'm I'm taking from your application. So I'm taking your UX for that snippet. It's like a frame almost, but why it be a, why should it be a frame now of yeah. course there might be security considerations there's that and maybe it should be a frame uh, because it makes security easier but, but frames are a lot clunkier flames are a lot frames are a lot clunkier but, yeah. but the, the, we'll be fighting with uh, all the security angles uh, and it's always this fight between sh sharing data and security but on the other hand i do think that this notion that we're all making data more atomic and we'd all want to be able to share. And I've been focusing a lot on the let's share the data. Now let's share the UX too. Anyway, I have to leave soon, but uh, that was my parting shot. I, I think it's really great. And as you first started, and I think Vincent was going in this direction too, um, the idea that you could, in a, in a group of interoperable, you know, platforms in an ecosystem, you could take one thing, whatever it is, and, and working backwards, not necessarily get the information. I mean, I, I like your idea of, of, you know, having that information come to you, but also go to the place where that information exists in whatever platform is part of this cooperative entity um, so that you can discover what other things are going on in that platform and delve more deeply. Um, so it, it could work in, in both those directions. Absolutely, it must, it must. The, the, the point, I mean, you know, I cannot, I'm working on information appliances and I want to do everything 
I have one lifetime. I won't do everything. So I've got to be part of an ecosystem so that whatever I do and, and, and we all, our tools will grow. Like we, because we become, you spoke of, you know, having the free clients as part of your sales force, but think of as all of us developers being one another sales force, because, oh, if you want to do this, use this snippet from this application. And if you want to do this, use this snippet from this application. So we're becoming one another's um, sponsors and, and yeah. yeah. Uh, can I can I just just add briefly one thing that that uh, this is what I I, I thought it would be a, I read what uh, Vince, Vincent wrote and I, I mean this is the idea that uh, in fact uh, what is also possible is that uh, this is what I've been doing recently is that you can have uh, a kind of uh, framework or constellations where where you have your own community or, or your own side. But you can you can basically very simply uh, create a sort of ze zero friction onboarding because uh, whatever whatever that that onboarding gives you is everybody they they have their own data so they don't give, their data is with them they have full control of their they bring their data they bring their participation to you and actually use that to actually enhance whatever site you have. And, ba and basically a kind of uh, interpersonal, interoperable layer can be deployed or in, in some, some, or augmented by any part. And this is really fits in with the trove and very, very fits in with factor that, okay, your, 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 your personal connections uh, thereby not only belong to this side, but they actually give you a way of connecting other people directly. And of course, you, you, you go to the place, you go to the community where they belong. And this is where really fits in the true that, that the, instead of just having a list of, okay, these, these are all these communities, these communities themselves can instantly onboard people who are actually gather, coming here, uh, you know, and, it, and, and it, so, 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 so suddenly it, it, any, any site like that gathering site, watering hole becomes a, a a, a focus for emergent communities, and I, I re really, really think that that this is this is the and of course just as as Mark Hunter said, this is also possible with fishing and that kind of technology that people that uh, the apps themselves can be brought to you. You know the whole point is flip the whole whole vision of you go somewhere because there is some capability. Jo it, it, join an ecosystem where the capabilities come to you to your data. That's it, yeah. Uh, and sorry, I don't want to interrupt you because it's so important what you're saying, but, and I really, but I really have to leave at the minute. Uh, and, but this is the difficulty in what I'm saying. Uh, it's easy to, to dream of sharing UX, but the reality is when you have uh, public data, it's easy. When you have purely private data, it's easy. When you have data which is shared and then, okay, I'm now putting it into another application, then the sharing list how does that behave when we don't have the same user list? And so we get into distributed identity. We get into this, into that. If we have all the principles of the distributed web, it's possible, but without them, not as simple as I claim. Okay, see you soon. Thanks, Mark Antoine. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, I, I, I would like to talk about it next week sometime. Yeah. yeah. Likewise, um, I have to run to. Um, you guys can continue on though if, if you want for a bit. Uh, yeah, let's, take care, let's, everyone. Let's wrap it. I'll post the recording uh, to uh, the Mattermost. Thanks, everybody. Great call. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael.